Hello there, thank you for checking out this edition of RNR's Ask the Expert. Today we are talking mergers and acquisitions. It's a huge topic in the industry, so I am excited to be joined by Gokul Padmanabhan. He is the owner of America's number one restoration brokerage firm. As a business broker, a business owner, and a specialist in the disaster restoration industry for 13 years, he completely understands the restoration industry and the challenges that owners face. From valuation to marketing to negotiations, RBA's approach has helped hundreds of businesses sell at the highest possible price and successfully transition under his new ownership. A recent client said to Gokul, when you work with Gokul as your broker advisor, you will get a higher valuation. You will be able to navigate the process and your deal will come to a successful conclusion with lower stress levels. He provides assurance and the experience you need to be successful. All right, Gogol, so I'm going to toss it over to you. Can you start by telling us a little bit about yourself, your background in the industry, and how you started your company? So thank you for the introduction, and then, you know, thanks for getting my name right, you know? <laughs> That's more than one try. We'll just let everybody know that. It was right there, you know? But, uh, uh, yeah, so, you know, uh, I founded Restoration Brokers America. We've been doing it for about 13 years now, and this is all we do, you know? So we broker restoration companies uh, all over the country, we've done about 500 million plus in transactions, uh, maybe over 400 transactions in the last 10 years or so, you know. And so uh, we've been doing it a long time. Uh, I personally have also been a partner in a restoration company, and I've sold my partnership out about four years ago. So I think I truly understand, you know, what it is to, for the, when I talk to the owners, I've been in their shoes, you know. Um, I've had technicians and I've had accounts receivable persons and I've made calls to the adjusters and I've also exited my business. And I think it gives me a, a unique perspective and, and an empathy and the emotional rides that owners face, you know, when they, when they sell companies and when they buy companies. Perfect. Okay. So uh, in addition to being a broker, do you own other companies? What else do you do? Yes, it's an addiction, I tell you, Michelle. You know, I, uh, my wife and I own other companies as well. We own a few companies in the home services field. And again, it just, you know, we're buyers and sellers of companies ourselves, you know, outside of restoration. So I live in those shoes. I mean, I know what a buyer's going through. We know what a seller's going through. And it just adds when we talk to our clients, um, you know, just gives us absolute empathy and, and, and clarity in, in, in what they're going through. So um, we are recording this at the end of January in 2021. So I'm curious what your perspective is of the state of the restoration industry right now in the middle of this pandemic. Yeah, fantastic question. It's a question I get asked like every time, like even today, I think like when I was coming into work, I was talking to a client of mine, you know, and, and they were asking me in, in Texas and I said, hey, the exact same question, what do you think? So, you know, we were sitting here in March. And we were saying, okay, we were sitting in our office right here and we were huddling up here and saying, we don't know what to expect, you know? And, and we were like every other business owners, like I was getting cash from all my accounts and shoring up my working capital and, and, and coming up with the contingency plans and, 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 and worst case scenario budgets, just like everybody else. But now almost a year, you know, none of that has panned out and it's been really, really, really interesting. And I think, what is happening is when other companies are not doing as well, restoration, we're so blessed to be in it. It's kind of raising to the top, you know? Mm -hmm. So when you look at like a Mary's muffin shop that had to close down for six months or, you know, we are an essential business. And so we are actually raising to the top, you know? And when I look back, the same thing happened in 2008. In 2008, nine and 10, mm -hmm. restoration companies, at least from a mergers and acquisitions perspective, did phenomenally well. Because compared to other companies, our industry was just shining, you know? And you look at deal volumes, you look at the number of buyers that call us into our office. We track that uh, almost on a weekly basis. Uh, since about April, it has almost doubled uh, per week. So we used to get on an average about 40 to 45 calls about our different engagements and different companies that we have listed. I mean, we're almost up to 85 to 90 calls. Um, a week now on a buyer. So I think the state of the industry is actually really good. I think uh, it happened in 2008. I think it's happening again. When things get tough, restoration really, really shines as an industry. As much as we sometimes complain about it and there's things we don't like about it, you know, in times like this, I feel truly blessed to be a part of it. Okay. So yeah. 
I agree. This is yeah. a great industry and people have been doing great things. So you talked about it, like uh, the industry is shining, but we're also in the middle of a pandemic. So is now a terrible time to consider selling or is now an opportunistic time for some? Yeah. So it is in short, it is like the best sellers market that I've ever seen. And I think it's happening because of a few reasons. And like I said earlier, you know, restoration companies are just shining right now. So think of it like if your business was like a part of a cereal box and it was on a shelf, you know, it looks so much better compared to all the other cereal boxes now, you know, so, so, so it's, it's a great time to sell. And there's also a couple of things that are kind of adding fuel to the fire. Okay, from the PPP loan and the CARES Act, there's huge incentives now for buyers to buy companies. Okay, there's uh, the guarantees from the government, there's, there's low interest rates, uh, you know, so that's also adding a lot of fuel to the fire. Then you look at all the layoffs that have happened. There's a lot of people that are rethinking their lives and they want to get into business ownership. And then they are swiping online in the MLS systems or they're talking to friends and buddies as to what industries are doing well. And we get calls all the time, Gokul, I've researched it and I, I have to be in restoration because my buddy told me it's a great business and, and, and I see them doing really well and it's recession resistant and you guys are still doing really great and doing a pandemic. So there's a huge demand that's coming up too, you know, on it. And the data supports that. Like if you look at what businesses have sold for, they're like during the pandemic, businesses are selling for about 12% higher than what it did two years ago. Okay, that's the stat that we found in our office, you know, so, so, so the prices are going up, the demand for restoration is going up. And as an industry, we're shining. So it is a, it is a, it is a great time if you're a seller uh, to do it. I haven't seen such a good seller's market in a long time. Okay, so if you're looking to sell, what are some ways that you can become as attractive as possible to potential buyers? So, so there's a lot of ways and, and, and there's eBooks on my website that you can go download that can go into really, really deep into, into, into some of these topics. But I have what I call my power three, right? One is always keep very, very clean financials. Don't keep Excel spreadsheets and QuickBooks and notepads and, you know, and, and, and follow general accounting principles. Don't come up with your own hybrid systems of keeping books. Okay. So that would be my number one. Okay. Two is have a really good bench strength. You know, if you're working 80 hours a week, don't expect someone to pay you a million dollars to get an 80 hours a week job. <laughs> okay, so your bench strength and your culture and your leadership has to be good. And the third one is make sure you got a really, really good reputation. Okay, so a lot of buyers, the first place they're going is Yelp and Google. So make sure that your reputation online, especially is really, really good. So those are my power three. There's about six or seven things you can do, but that would be my top three. The power that, three. That, that, I love it. Yeah, okay. that, that, that would be my power three. Hands down. So, so there's your power three. So what are some of the biggest mistakes on the flip side that you're seeing companies or owners make when they're trying to sell their business? So, so yes, I could talk hours about this. Okay. But, but at a really high level, there's two. Okay. One is not listening to the warning signs. Okay. So there's some clear warning signs. And in my ebook, I have about six of them, but, but let me just talk about two. Okay, so let's talk about burnout. You know, so, so if you're not getting up every day and, 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 and hop skipping to work and to your business, and if you are always talking negative about it to your husband or your wife or your kids, you know, that's a warning sign that you need to exit because that is when your business is going to be valued the most. So every year you run the business when you're burnt out, the value of your business is going to go down because you're just not going to be motivated. Okay, and, and I think the second biggest mistake that that people make is not preparing in advance. Okay. So they kind of wait till they're absolutely burnt out and they've been burnt out for five years and six years and seven years. And then they'll call our office and they'll say, go, I want out. But the business has just been deteriorating for nine, 10 years in a row and the business becomes unsellable. Right? So I think timing of a business, as soon as you see the business plateau and you have no more ambition to take it to the next level, you need to exit and hand it off to somebody else who wants to take it to the next level mm -hmm. and really pay attention to the burnout signs. I think that would be my advice of what, what you want to do. Okay. All right. So um, one of my last questions here. So why should people use a broker? Why is it a bad idea to try to go it alone? 
Very interesting question and one that I love to answer all the time because I get asked, some of my more provocative clients will ask me that, why do I need to use you? You know, and that's fine. <laughs> that's a, it's a very valid question. So I think it's kind of like, you know, would you get on a plane with a person that's flying an airplane for the first time, right? And has never landed a deal or landed a plane? Probably not. You know, it's, it's the same thing. Most of the sellers, you know, if you're going to sell your own company, that's probably the only time you're going to do it in your lifetime. And you're sitting across a table from someone that does it for a living. Okay. So you are at a terrible disadvantage. Okay. And also if you're doing it alone, you're probably talking to one buyer at a time and a one-to-one -one relationship between a buyer and a seller always puts a seller at a disadvantage and always puts a buyer at a huge advantage. Okay. So the chances are you're leaving a lot of money on the table, you know, so what a good brokerage firm should do for you is to create demand. Okay, that is one of the most important things a buyer can do for you is take your business and take it out to as many qualified buyers as possible and have everybody kind of fighting to get to your business. That's when you get the best deals. Okay, and like we have over 900 buyers now in our database. So when we list a business and we take it on the market, and these are vetted buyers that want to get into restoration, they've researched the, the, the industries and the companies, a lot of them, we've been working with them for years. That creates demand and keeps the buyers honest, you know, so selling it on your own, maybe it is for some people, but but for most, it's not. Okay, fair. All right. Anything sense, that we yeah? haven't <laughs> covered? <laughs> that you want to touch on. I know that um, we had a really good conversation even before we started recording this interview and yeah. there's going to be articles coming up and more resources and some state of the industry stuff later in the year. So anything else that you want to add in here before we wrap it? Yeah, I know we were just talking about the state of the industry, right? And I, I think about, you know, our, our restoration industry as a whole and so many entrepreneurs that are running their business. And when people call us, there's about 80% of the companies that call us are unsellable. Okay, so there's a lot of money being left on the table in our industry. And I know you and I are going to write an article on that pretty soon. So this is a teaser, everybody. Keep looking out for R&R &R emails in your inbox. Um, you know, so, so, so a couple of tips, I would say, you know, it, 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 the market is really healthy right now. It's a great time to sell. You know, watch out for the warning signs, you know, that I mentioned earlier. And always start with evaluation, just baseline your company and just say, what is it worth today? Kind of like a house. You know, if you're going to sell your house, you look at your neighbors, and say, well, it's worth X. Always start with the baseline because that gives you the strategy to move forward, right? And you're not leaving money on the table. So that would be my top three uh, kind of points I would like to make in closing. So thank you for this interview. I really, really enjoyed it. You know? Thank you, Gokul. And you can find out more from Gokul and his articles and other videos on rnrmagonline.com other resources there. There will be more coming. Gokul, thank you for your time. Have a great rest of your day. All right. Thank you, everybody. Appreciate it.